Okay, so 7.2 is all about defining this idea of a probability distribution, right? That's, that's really what 7.2 is about. It uses this idea of a simple event. It's, it's not very important what a simple event is. Uh, it's just basically a subset of the sample space that has only one element or one outcome. Um, and, and that's to keep things simple, right? Um, now, a probability distribution, uh, we're going to represent these in a couple of different ways, uh, but one of the more common ways to do it is as a probability table. And uh, what you do is you list all the possible simple events and you assign each one a probability. Uh, and this table is super abstract, so let's try and do something a little bit more concrete. Um, there are two important rules that, um, that your distribution, uh, that your table must match uh, in, order for, um, in order for this uh, table to actually be a probability distribution, right? So the first rule is that every single probability, right, that P function uh, gives us a probability, every single probability has to be between zero and one. It can equal zero, it can equal one, but you can't have negative probabilities and you also can't have probabilities like two or a thousand, right? Um, in terms of percentages, uh, this is every probability has to be between 0% and 100%, right? There are situations outside of probability we're talking about 110 percent makes sense um but uh especially like in finance uh but not not in probability so um here we have an example table and i'm, I'm gonna make up a story for it right there are six different outcomes um so what's going on is we are rolling a die oops Right, um, and to the observers, it looks just like an ordinary die. However, uh, I'm cheating. Uh, what I've done is I've, I've secretly drilled a hole into this die and I've put a bit of lead uh, in the corner here, right? And, and what's that, what that's done is that's changed, um, it's changed how likely certain numbers are, are, are gonna come up, right? Um, so um, you could see the probabilities, instead of being one out of six for every single number, the probability that, uh, that we roll a, a one with this die is now only one out of 12, right? So it's less likely now, whereas the probability that we roll a two, um, that's now uh, three out of 12. That's a 25% chance. So that's a, a significant increase um, in, in the likelihood and also the probability that we roll a five uh, is also a, a much more likely. So I, I seem to be trying to roll more sevens, right? Um, so this is, uh, this is not a fair die, it's a biased die, right? Uh, some, somebody's trying to cheat. So um, uh, now the way we know that these probabilities are in between the number, uh, uh, the number zero and one is first off, they're all positive. Right, so they're all positive, which means that every single one of these numbers is larger than zero. Uh, we can put in the or equal to, uh, but they're all larger than zero. Um, now, the way we know that they're less than one is because the numerator, right, the numbers on top, these are all less than, uh, less than the denominator, right? So if your numerator, if your numerator is smaller than your denominator, let me write this out. All right, if your numerator is less than your denominator, then the, then the fraction is less than one, All right? One divided by 12, we don't need to know what it is, we just need to know that, um, that it's less than one. Right, so all of these all of these fractions are are probabilities, right? 
So we satisfy this first requirement, all probabilities between zero and one inclusive. Uh, now, uh, the next rule that every distribution must satisfy is that if you add up all the probabilities, right, the sum of all the probabilities has to equal one, right? Um, so um, later on in the, in the course, we're going to have distribution tables like this with missing information, right? There's a, a probability missing. Now, um, if you look at this sort of naively, you may think, oh, oh, that must mean that it's zero. No, it, it is not zero. Um, the, the task that, that we've created for you is, is we want you to figure out what that probability is. Now, I've written in an unknown probability uh, with a denominator of 12, just because that makes fraction math easy, right? If you add up, right, if you add up a bunch of fractions, it is a lot easier if the denom, or sorry, yeah, if it's a lot easier if all the denominators are the same, right? So with common denominators, when you're adding fractions, all you do have to do is you do all of the math with the numerators, right? So one plus three plus one plus this unknown number, number x plus four plus one, right? And then you divide by that common denominator, okay? So what that second rule says is when we add all of, all of those numerators up, uh, we have to end up, or all the probabilities up, we have to end up with, with a, um, a fraction that is equal to one, right? That is, we need to end up with a fraction that is 12 out of 12, right? The probability, if you add up all the probabilities, you have to get one, that is 12 out of 12, right? So what does X have to be um, in order for, for this to actually be true? Two. Two. X has to equal two because, uh, well, yeah, um, because when X is two, it adds up to 12, right? So um, we have those two rules, right? Um, the the probabilities are all between zero and one inclusive. And when you add up, when you add up all of the probabilities, you have to get the number one. In this case, uh, 12 out of 12 is, is how we're rep representing one. Okay, so um, this is a probability distribution. Now the third rule, what it tells us is if we're dealing with an event that is not simple, right? Events can contain more than one element. Uh, sorry, more than one element. So if you're, if you're dealing with an event that is not simple, um, the way you calculate its probability is you just add up all, all the probabilities, the sum of the probabilities of all the events, all the simple events uh, it contains, right? Now that, that rule sounds a little bit uh, messy in words, uh, but it's a really simple idea. Right, so um, looking at this distribution table, um, we're asked, what is the probability, uh, find the probability of the given event, right? What is the probability of the event? Well, uh, the probability of the event A, it contains uh, the simple event rolling a one versus rolling a three. And so we just add up the probabilities associated with one and three. To get that so 112 plus 112 and since we have a common denominator we just add together the numerators and divide by that same denominator right so 1 plus 1 gives us 2 out of 12 and that's the answer right so that's that's all the the third rule is saying right the probability of an event is the sum of the probabilities of the simple events in e Right, so that's, that's pretty much all it's saying. Um, and E is just a, a letter representing a generic event, right? So uh, let's use that rule again. Um, what is the probability of event B? That is, what is the probability that I roll a two, a four, a five, or a six? 
uh, 10 twelfths. 10 twelfths. That's exactly right. How, how did you get that? What, what did you add together? What numbers? Uh, added the, I added the uh, 3 twelfths and the um, 4, uh, excuse me, the 2 twelfths um, and then the 4 twelfths and then finally the last one on the 1 twelfth altogether. So S2 is 3 twelfths, S4 is 2 twelfths, um, S5 is 4 twelfths, and S6 is 1 twelfth. All right, and notice I just did the math with the numerators, uh, but don't forget to divide by that, that denominator at the end, right? So yeah, that gives us 10 out of 12. Right. So uh, that's, that's all we have to do uh, as far as um, calculating probabilities of, of events that are not simple. Uh, now, what about uh, this last one? Uh, C is the event S. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna ignore, pretend like C is not there. Uh, that's how it was stated in the book. Uh, but what is the probability of the, uh, remember this special S is the sample space, right? So what is the probability of the sample space? Just one? Or 12 One. twelfths. That's it. The, that's really what the, um, the second rule is telling us. This, uh, the probability of the sample space is always one. Now, uh, the denominator changes, uh, can change. Um, so if you're dealing with fractions, you might write the number one as 12 out of 12, uh, but you can write it lots of, lots of different ways, right? Um, but the probability of the sample space is always one. Okay. Um, let's move on. Okay. So we're going to be representing these distributions, these probability distributions in lots of different ways, right? Uh, so one way is instead of giving you a probability table, uh, we might give you a frequency table. And frequency tables are something out of chapter six, um, right? So uh, a survey was conducted. Uh, Ivy Tech students were asked, how many classes are you taking? Now the frequency or the counts is the number of students, right? And uh, the outcomes or the sample points are the number of classes that particular student was taking, All right? So what this table is saying, uh, three students uh, said they are taking exactly one class, five students are taking two classes, 12 students were taking three classes, and seven students were taking four classes, All right? So um, if I were to ask, uh, what is the probability, what is the probability Maybe I'll write out the full sentence. What is the probability a student is taking uh, one class, exactly one class? Uh, what, what would you guys say? Three out of 27. That is exactly right. Three out of 27. Um, well, it's pretty clear where the three came from, right? That's the number of students that are taking one class. Uh, where did the 27 come from? You out of all the students together. So three plus five plus 12 plus seven equals 27. Exactly. If you add up all of the frequencies, uh, what, you're, what you're calculating is the size of the sample space.
right? Uh, the size of the sample space. Um, and um, this rule here doesn't quite work as a general rule for the probability function, uh, but in a finite math class, it's pretty close uh, to, to our working definition of, of this probability function. So what it's saying is the probability of some event equals the number of elements in that event divided by the number of elements in the sample space, right? So in this case, each student represents an element or a sample point. Um, and so this event has three sample points out of 27 in total, right? Uh, this event, the probability that a student is taking exactly two classes, well, there are five, uh, five e sample points in the event out of 27. Uh, the probability of students taking three classes is 12 out of 27, and seven classes is, se or sorry, four classes is seven out of 27, right? So uh, we can always convert our frequency tables into a probability table simply by calculating the size of the sample space and then dividing each of the counts or frequencies by that size, right? So um, frequency tables uh, work as probability distributions. Uh, you'll notice that each of these fractions is between the numbers zero and one. They're all positive and the numerators are all less than 27. And if we add up the fractions, because we have a common denominator, we just add up the numerators. Three plus five is eight, 12 plus eight is 20, and 20 plus seven is 27. And so we get 27 out of 27. The, the probabilities all add up to one, right? Uh, so uh, it satisfies the, the requirements for a, a probability distribution. Okay, in chapter six, we learned about frequency Venn diagrams. Right. Well, frequency Venn diagrams are also uh, can also represent probability distributions. Right. So in chapter seven, we're going to be working with probability Venn diagrams, where instead of having counts inside of the sets, we're going to have uh, probabilities, and these can be fractions. Uh, they can also be decimals, and I'm just going to write this over to the side here you will see Venn diagrams with decimals uh, in place of fractions. So let's see, point one. I'm just making up some numbers, right? So that's, that's uh, perfectly fine, right? The only requirement is that the numbers are between zero and one inclusively. And if you add them all up, it has to equal one, okay. So um, this frequency Venn diagram, um, how, did we, how can we convert uh, a frequency Venn diagram uh, into a probability Venn diagram? All right, so just take a moment and look at the intersection. How did we go from 20 to 20 out of 38? We just turn the numbers into a fraction with the denominator being the uh, total number of, well, numbers in the, in the whole diagram. Exactly. The, the sample space and the universal set are exactly the same concept, right? They're just different names because they come from different parts of math. But if you add up all of the numbers in the frequency Venn diagram, you get the size of the sample space which is 38, right? We, we find out that the number of elements in the universal set equals 38. And the only thing that's new in chapter, chapter seven is we just have to remember to take our frequencies and divide them by our sample size or the size of the universal set. 
And that just magically converts all of these frequencies into a probability distribution, right? Now, just in case you're in doubt uh, that this really is a probability distribution, um, I'm gonna highlight some points here, right? So each partition, each partition is a simple event, right? So this region I'm highlighting now, I've been calling the neither nor, people that like neither apples nor bananas. And then we have the people that like only apples. Um, I'm still seeing this, this mistake here. The only apple set is apples, but not bananas, right? This region here is different than the apple set. It's inside the apple set, but it's not the whole thing. Oops. All right, so I, I, I like to call this the only apple set. These are people that only like apples. They like apples, but not bananas. And then we have the only banana sets, the people that like bananas, but do not like apples. And so in set notation, it would be outside the apple set, a complement, and inside the banana set. <clears throat> Um, and then we have, uh, finally, we have the intersection, both A and B. That's the region that is inside A and also inside B, All right? So that's our, our intersection. Oh, by the way, the neither nor is outside A and outside B, All right? Okay. So uh, each, each of these partitions is a simple event. And so I, I went ahead and, and put them into the table, right? You write out the frequencies. Um, the neither nor is two. Uh, only A has 11. Only B has five people. There are 20 people that like apples and bananas, right? You write all of those frequencies into this table, and it's magically a frequency table, uh, which can be converted into a probability table. You calculate the size of the sample space, and then you divide the frequencies by the sample space, the counts by the sample space. And that's what gives us a probability distribution. All right, so we're gonna be representing probability distributions in, in lots of different formats. Uh, the table tends to be the most common, uh, but uh, we're also gonna be doing um, just as many Venn diagram problems with probability as we did uh, in chapter six. Um, before I move on, are there any questions about these uh, probability Venn diagrams? Okay, so uh, just a, a couple of more facts and I, that I think we'll, we'll start getting into, um, into some problems. So uh, the probability of the empty set, right? Uh, chapter six, we talked about special, special sets. Well, um, we have some important events and they're exactly the same, right? Uh, the empty set has a probability of zero. The probability that nothing happens is zero. Um, and then the probability of the sample space is one. The probability that something happens is one. One is guaranteed, zero is impossible. Now, um, the empty set is a subset of every event. Um, it's uh, every element inside the empty set, there are none, is also an element in any other set, right? So the empty set is always a subset. And by definition, events are subsets of the sample space. And so when we apply the probability function to each of these sets, that converts them into numbers. And so we go from the subset notation uh, to uh, less than, right? So subset is analogous to this idea of less than. Uh, one is about sets, subsets is all about sets, whereas less than is used with uh, numbers. Um, but that gives us this really important fact. The probability of the empty set is zero and the probability of the sample space is one, so not only uh, do simple events have probabilities between zero and one, in fact, every event must be between zero and one, 
right? So probabilities are always between zero and one. Uh, on WebAssign or on the test, uh, if, if it asks, what is the probability? This is an important fact for checking for, for mistakes. If the question is, what is the probability? And your answer is 20,500, most likely, most likely, you probably forgot to divide by the sample space. I, in chapter seven, sections one through four, um, pretty much all we're doing is we're, we're repeating chapter six, except we have to remember to divide our counts by the size of the sample space so that they go from counts to probabilities, right? That's really all chapter seven is about. Uh, the, at least until we get to section uh, 7.5.